I want to show webhooks, uh, APIs, how to use them in NADN. It just comes up a lot. So, and I want to show two ways. One is just a normal API, and one is a webhook that integrates with Superbase, because again, just a great pattern. So this is just your normal uh, API. You know, they call it a webhook, but honestly, most of the time we're going to use it as an API. And, and when you do that, you can then just hit it with a Superbase. So in this case, I'm just going to send a request to it and we can use it. And you don't have to respond with a webhook. You could respond with just any of your last output. So I could just put a set here and uh, I could say, you know, output, I'll we'll just say foo. Let's just see what happens. And then I'll get rid of this guy. And we'll just tell this guy here, don't respond with the webhook, but just respond when that guy finishes. And I'll click save. And there we go. Just that simple. Now you can do a lot there, but but the thing with you know, security and websites when you're using this in the web is that you then have to have a bearer token and you have to have a way to protect your API potentially. But if you just use Superbase and have it talk to itself, its tables, and you write to a table, then you can trigger your NADN. And then it gets even better, and I'll show that in a moment. So in this case, we're just going to have a silly table called uh, examples. And obviously, think of it as like, a, it could even, it can be anything. It could be a jobs table. It can be a process table. It could be just writing CMS content. And when I save it, I want to do this other stuff with AI, right? That's, you're going to see that in a moment and how it can work. So here I'm going to write a, a, a piece of content to that table. I'm going to say status pending. And these will make sense in a moment. I'm going to say step one, and then I'm going to say, um, right? And step one is important too, because we can actually make step two and three and four different NADNs in this process, different workflows. In this case, I'm going to have this one workflow deal with all of these steps, but you can see where that's just whatever. I don't need to do that, right? I could have plenty of workflows. And when you have multiple workflows, you can then troubleshoot them or build them quicker because you can just run them, run them, run them again and again. So by adding that record, we got a, a, a webhook here. Now, we got a webhook because I went into Superbase, I went into integrations, I turned on database webhooks, and I then added create a webhook, and then I added the webhook here, and I call it what it is called in, in NADN so I can kind of remember which one it is. And then I connected it to the table public example, which is just amazing here because you could trigger webhooks from the authentication process, from storage. So it just goes on and on what you can do here with this flow, this pattern. And then I say, okay, send a request. We're going to send a post. We could even send our bearer token, right? And there's our U a URL. So in this case, we get a, um, a an event. Or we get hit with that API, with that webhook. And when I wrote that, you can see it's green. I'm going to copy it to the editor and unpin everything. And now we have data coming in that says insert hello world. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a switch and I'm going to do a little bit more here. I actually had the whole video die on me. So I'm going to move this over and just talk about it. So we're going to get rid of this guy for a moment and we're going to focus on insert. So when this inserts, it's going to say, yeah, I got the insert. I care about that and I'm going to call it insert. And I care about updates, but we'll tackle that in a moment. And then we're going to say, you know, if you have an insert, I'm going to go update this and um, uh, I'm going to go grab that record you gave me and just set it to uh, running, right? So I'm going to change this from step to status. I'm going to call it running. So now imagine the user interface is showing that, yeah, it went from pending to running. And then we're, we're not going to do anything to the content. Oh, yeah. No, we don't need to. Okay. So now we've gotten this job and it says, okay, I'm going to change this to running. So the UI knows it's changed. And then we're just going to give the LLM something silly because it doesn't really matter, honestly. And we're going to pass it the content of that incoming data. No big deal. And then we're going to go here at the end of that and say, okay, great. We have this ID. We have another step because we're telling it we're done with our step. We're going to go to step two and we're going to give it the new content that the LLM gave us. So let's just run that. And we just can run it through and let's see why that complained. Let's maybe I rename something. Let's just drag that over. Okay. So now we come out this other end in our row here went from, from step one, hello world to hello there. And I think if we, let's give ourselves some room here. Let's see. Oh, it's right there. There it is. And then we go from, we have running to step two. Now, when we finished updating that, it triggered another webhook. And right here, we got a webhook that it didn't care about because that webhook came in and it said, hey, I'm update mode and I'm in running state and I'm step two, okay? So at this point, we could easily, and let's do this, and I'm going to actually separate this so we can easily say, hey, I don't care about this, but I, I do care about update. Now, I'm not going to follow this because I don't like where this was going. I'm going to make a new webhook. 
And I would typically put this into another workflow just because I wanted to, it's just gonna be nice to keep it that organized. I'm gonna say uh, whatever, API v2 uh, event step two, we'll call it. Who cares? I don't really know, right? I'm gonna go grab that. And now what we're gonna say is, yep, we're ready for step two. And it comes in here and we're gonna do something with that. And we don't need this anymore because I've separated them. So I'm gonna say, actually I'll add that back so we can see the simple way of listening to this. And we're gonna say, if that is a particular step and if that is gonna be what we care about. So let's go look. So we're gonna call this step two. So we'll say step two in the event. All right, and now when that comes in, so it already came in, honestly, so we saw it coming up here, right? Step two, but let's trigger it again, and we're gonna get some traffic here. So let's go back to here. We're gonna insert a row. We're gonna say status pending. Uh, we're gonna say step one, testing, you know, testing, one, two, three. Let's see what the uh, LLM says. We give that a moment to run. And if we just go here for a moment, it just kicks in because Grok is so fast, but that's it. I mean, you can have a chat here and I'm gonna do a chat widget later on. But now we went from running to step two to, let's, you wanna test the system, huh? Well, but more importantly, we would have gotten a message here. Now, how? We would go here, we would grab this, we would go back to our integrations, go back to our integrations, our webhook, and we would add that. So I'm gonna go add uh, step two, we'll call it, and we'll go say, hey, when someone uh, updates that table, we want to send it to our new uh, API. I'm gonna disable all these APIs after. So now at this point, it would have triggered that, but of course I didn't do anything because I forgot to plug it in. So I'm gonna set it to now, and that's an update right there, okay? And at that point, we should see an event coming in. So here we go, that's the right time, and here we, it's green. I'm gonna copy it to the editor, but look it, it didn't ask me to unpin. That's a weird thing with NNN, so you just reload it, and then uh, it should ask you to unpin it. It didn't, I don't know why. So let's reload it again. I'm gonna go back to that execution, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's green here. I'm gonna copy to editor. Now we got it, whatever, it just happens. So, okay, now we have our data and we have update and we have step two. And this guy's like, you know, it didn't, it got, um, it might've gotten traffic, but it didn't care because it just cares about insert. All right, so I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm gonna say, if, if the type is update, well, we're only connected to update, so we don't need that. But if the step, is step two, then I care. And maybe I care too, because maybe the status goes to failed, right? So sorry, I think I put that in the wrong one. So if the status is running, then I care as well, okay? If I don't care, we don't have to do anything. So now we can just trigger this and we're done. We see it go. Now, it's gonna go here and what do we do? We could say step three completed, completed, and you know, like this guy doesn't really know. It could put step three, it could be anything you want it to be called, but it just, it can just, you know, pass something. And this one here becomes the record we just passed in. So let's go grab that, cause I just did a copy paste and that's it. So now on that insert, we're gonna set it to completed into a step that doesn't exist, which again, it could just keep going and going and going. It doesn't even need to set completed because we can decide it's not. We can have a master uh, event handler that knows when it's completed, things like that. All right, so if we were to just to set this again to, and that was kind of nice that I could do that. We're gonna see this transition in a moment to incomplete it, just like that. All because it triggered that, that, that webhook. And so, yeah, I just wanna show the two big ways I use webhooks as an API basic, but as a way to communicate and process any type of flow of any level of complexity you want from the front end. Front end, super base, writes table, waits, real-time events, sees it happening in real time, and then it's doing the work just like that. All right, that was a 10 minute video that just went way too long and it's the second recording, so hope it made sense. Thank you.